Hi everyone. Uh, I talked about this topic last year, so those of you who are here are, are uh, familiar with the topic already. Um, this year I'll focus on examples from the model. Uh, is the model's finished internally? We haven't released it yet. We're thinking September we'll be able to release the model. So half of this I'm going to show you scenes from the model, show you possibilities of what you could use it for. The first half, I'll, I'll review what we did again for those of you who weren't here last year. Uh, so this is the first 3D lithostratigraphic model of the Paleozoic bedrock of Southern Ontario. It's finished, but again, we haven't released it. There is updated bedrock topography, digital bedrock geology. There is updated petroleum well formation contact data for 30,000 formation tops. Uh, the model uses leapfrog works and important uh, point here, the models run at 400 meter resolution, so anything smaller than that does not show up, but pinnacle reefs still show up. Uh, 2019 model release. Here's the project scope, all of southwestern Ontario, covering all the Paleozoic sedimentary rocks. There's 54 layers in the model representing 70 Paleozoic bedrock formations, so some of the formations are combined into single layers. Uh, plus the Precambrian, plus the surficial sediments, 110,000 square kilometers in the model. There's the project team, uh, project lead in the center there, Hayes and Russell, uh, is with the Geological Survey of Canada. So most, all of the funding actually for this project came from the Geological Survey of Canada. And most of the funding was <laughs> spent at the oil, gas and salt resources libraries. They did the quality assurance checks on the data because the model is heavily dependent on the data that goes into it. Um, the data being a uh, petroleum well records within the formation top picks within it. Uh, this is the process that's gone through to produce the models, an iterative process, we went through this seven times. So the version of the model we're going to release is the seventh iteration and the the most important part of this is the QA, QC of anomalous missing or in error petroleum malformation top data. Again, most of that, uh, most of that work was done at the library. And the uh, geologists on the project um, review the results of each iteration, identify uh, where there's probably additional errors and, and fixes to be done. That goes back to the library and we go through it over and over again. Um, the input data, uh, again, the principal source of data is the petroleum well database with the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry database uh, that uh, access is provided to industry and the public through the oil, gas and salt resources library. And, and they input uh, edits into that database. Um, you can see the other people, uh, Frank Brunton has a lithostratigraphic chart. He's mainly responsible for that. There's a new digital subcrop geology map. That's Maya Summers and the Ministry of Natural Resource and Forestry. And there's other digital products in there that come from different sources. This is the new lithostratigraphic chart for Southern Ontario that was created for this project. And the big difference here is we're showing the erosional profile, which is here. Uh, each of these columns here is a different geographic location in Southern Ontario, which more or less is shown in this uh, map over here. But basically we're going from west to east as, as we go across here. The colors on here are lithological. So everything in blue are carbonates. Uh, there's a lighter green brown color on here are the shales, the yellows are sandstones. These are Precambrian metamorphic rocks of the Canadian Shield down here. Uh, and salt is in these purple colors here. So here's the Salina group. These gaps here are intervals of exposure and erosion at the surface in the geologic past. And those are important intervals for the occurrence of water in these rocks in the subsurface. So this is a, a new product um, and that, that is actually published now. Uh, there's the new digital subcrop geology map that I understand is going to be published on the library website sometime in the next few months. Um, we'll have to talk to the library staff and keep track of when that comes out so that'd be uh, available. So this, this is a, uh, a critical 
component of the model. There's just a cross-sectional view showing the petroleum well data. So this is just a, a forest of wells with the color coding on the geological formations. You can see w without modeling, you, you, you can already see the layering in, in the, uh, here's the, this pink down here is the Precambrian, all these colored uh, layers up here are the Paleozoic <coughs> sedimentary rocks. Each column is one well. There's a well density, uh, and obviously well density is important because that has implications for reliability of the model. So where we have less dense data, the reliability declines uh, in the model layers in those areas. Uh, so you can see we got a lot of wells down here, so a lot of confidence here, less so in the rest of Southern Ontario. Uh, here's some other wells. Uh, the first slide was just petroleum wells. There's other wells that we added in to try and deal with some of the gaps, uh, especially along the Niagara Escarpment up here. So we've added a lot of other well data that's not petroleum wells uh, to improve the, the model and close up those gaps for us. So the rest of this is a 3D tour of some of these geologic features and they're, they're scenes that are pulled from the model itself. There's a free, free viewer software that's provided by LeapFrog. So you, the, all the views I've got on here are using the viewer software. I don't have the actual uh, modeling software myself. Our modeler resides with the Geological Survey of Canada in Ottawa. Um, so I'm just gonna give you some examples from the model, as just the caution here, a model is not uh, data, it's a, it's a modeled result run, uh, created by an algorithm, it's checked by geologists, but it's, it's a model and should be used uh, accordingly. So if there's anything that, if, you, if you're the user and you find there's something questionable, you should check the source data to, to confirm. This first shot shows the model with the superficial sediments sitting on top, you know, so obscuring all the bedrock that is more of more interest to, to this group. Um, the shuttle radar topography is on this surface and that's from the SRTM data set. Here if we pull off, so all the layers can be turned on and off. So, so you can turn the layers off, so get rid of the uh, surficial sediments and now you see the bedrock geology underneath. So all these colored belts on here are the layers of bedrock, the edges of slightly tilted layers of bedrock where they come to the surface. So this is a surface expression of these layers that are dipping down this way, dipping down into the Chatham Say here. These are some regional cross sections or slices through the model, vertical slices through the model. So everything in pink on here are the Precambrian basement rocks. So here, this is along the length of the of the uh, Algonquin Arch, and this is the Chatham Sag. And down below is going the other way, going across the arch. So there's the Michigan Basin over here and the Appalachian Basin over on this side. Uh, this is a look at sub-regional falls. This is the Dundee Formation surface, uh, surface of one of the layers. And you can see some sublinear features on here. Uh, some of which uh, correlate with known faults. So I've just drawn those on, on there for you. And then there's these features. Uh, so the question is, are these faults as well? Or what is it that, that's showing up on that surface in the model? Topography is an uh, obvious use of the model. So I'm trying to show you the Niagara Escarpment uh, in this shot. And I labeled some of the features on there for you. This is like any topography. This is a valley. Uh, this is bedrock topography on, on the on the surface. So there's there's a valley eroded into the Salina group, which weathers away very rapidly. So it, so you can you can see the valley on that surface. Uh, this shows you a little clearer. This is in the Intercap area, and the Bass Islands is forming the cap rock for for an escarpment there, and there's a 30 meter high escarpment there, a little valley right in front of it. Uh, again, weather, differential erosion, preferential erosion of the Salina group compared to the Bass Islands uh, forming the cap rock there. This one's showing you Lake Huron bedrock geology. So that's the, so we got features. Uh, we now have, with that new digital bedrock geology map, we have a map showing the bedrock geology interpreted, uh, inferred bedrock geology of Lake Huron. 
And now you can see some features and the names on here are coming from this reference that I've got you at the bottom here. So there's features out there that most of us have never seen before or weren't aware of. Uh, there's where salt occurs in the subsurface, at least the modeled version uh, of the salt, uh, the subsurface, that'd uh, be the B salt. Here's cross section or slice looking at salt dissolution and collapse. So I've turned some of the layers off here so you can see what's going on. So the B salt is left on here uh, and you can see there's a dissolution feature in the B salt and there's a collapse feature in some of the overlying uh, Dundee for uh, Devonian formations up above. So I've marked the Dundee formation on there for reference for you in salts gone or newly gone over here. And you can see the subsidence has occurred over top of that. Um, this is important for oil and gas is this differential dissolution of salt and, and subsidence creates structures in, in these rocks that form oil and, uh, traps for crude oil in Ontario. There's the uh, Guelph formation or Lockport group pinnacle reefs in Ontario. These are approximately 100 meters high. This is Lambton County you're looking at. And you can also see the electric fault uh, trending through here. So reefs do show up. This is one of the first things I look for when we ran the early versions of the model. The reefs did not show up in those versions. We we're running a thousand meter resolution. And we reduced that to 400 meters and improved the data and, and the reefs uh, start showing up. Uh, I, I kind of like the salt dissolution timing. It shows up really well in the model. So here's the Zurich Pinnacle Reef and you can see the uh, structural effects on, on the rocks up above it due to differential dissolution of salt at different periods of time. Uh, there's uh, out in Lake Erie, I think I would run this slice, and there's the Morpeth, as the Pinnacle Reef, so platform reef, and you can see the gap in the, in the B salt over top of that reef. There's some regional uh, faults and hydrocarbon traps. What have I got? I got the Kimball Collinville Fault, Don Fault, Electric Fault, and Dover Faults show up on here as well. We haven't modeled faulting in, uh, in the software. The software is incapable of actually modeling a fault. Other, other software packages would do that, uh, so, but you can see uh, displacements uh, on, on the uh, bedrock surfaces, uh, so you can see where those faults are. Uh, so I've added in, I've tried to look for expression of known pools. And so here's the Dover Fault and the uh, oil pool is associated with, with that. So you can see the, uh, this, here's the model for, for this type of reservoir up there. So you can actually see that uh, for, for the Dover pool. It doesn't work so well with some of the other Ordovician pools. Uh, here's Rodney. Uh, it's again a differential salt dissolution. In this case, I turned off the B salt layers because we've used Yellow color is known to color in all these uh, salina groups. So sometimes you have to turn off a layer to get it to show up for you. Um, again, here's the reservoir model that, uh, that to give you an idea of what sort of structure we're looking at here. That's right through the Rodney oil pool in the Devonian. For example of a Cambrian structure, this is Clearville and you can see the, the controlling fault on, on that reservoir here, that's Cambrian down here, here's the Precambrian again. And a sulfur water example, this is, this is relevant for, for anyone studying aquifers, but it's, it's relevant here as well because that sulfur water aquifer destroys casings, it, uh, it uh, completely corrodes through casings and, and it's not very friendly to concrete either. So knowing where it is and, and how it works is important. So in this, this area, uh, this, that sulfur water aquifer is artesian, so it's, it causes environmental issues. And it's a, an area you wanna be careful. If you're a water well driller, you don't wanna drill into this because you're not going to get what you're hoping for. So water well drillers stay up in here and they don't drill down into the lower Dundee, which is, is the aquifer in this area. And if, if they're in a topographic low, these the sulfur water flows at the surface. There's just some remaining issues. I just, uh, I'm not gonna dwell on these just to show there are other things we'd like to fix. And it looks like we'll have an opportunity to fix these because we're, we're, we're close to finish to uh, uh, getting an ex a three year extension to do some more modeling uh, and, and, and improve on the results we got so far. Um, if you're a licensed, uh, 
If you have licensed access to the All Gas and Salt Resources Library's data, you can see the, the actual data for each well that, that comprises them all. This is just showing you an example here. So the next phase, we hope um, we can translate the lithostratigraphic model, which is what this is, and uh, look, at, look at water uh, within those layers. And that would be then a hydrostratigraphic model. And that would incorporate 2D groundwater models like this and groundwater mapping by the Ontario Geological Survey. And this is just a list of some model issues and future refinements that we, we hope to make on the, on the model. Um, and that's it. You can read through that summary. You don't need me to read it for you. Thank you very much.